Sup? Hi. Tyler. Keith. Sam. Plugged on. We're making our first That's video right. together in 2019. Well, not counting glass, but yeah. I mean, we're like non, so non. I always forget about not, that. Not non-review video. Yeah. Like not like, uh, yeah, more fun video. Yeah. Hopefully it's more fun. So we're going to talk about uh, something that's been going around. So I didn't come up with this idea. Shout out to uh, Josh from uh, Josh Armijo, runner JMA, and uh, Elliot from EQP TV. Uh, that's where I saw this idea. But this is 10 albums that will always stick with you, no matter what. Maybe memories you have associated with it, or you just really like the album, whatever. But 10 albums that will never, never look good. Go from you. <laughs> Never go away from you. <laughs> Whatever. I can't uh, speak. That was really funny. I can't speak the words. But you do you speak the truth? Or do you make your peace some other way? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Why don't you start? Why don't you start? Why don't you start? Why don't you start? Nah, you, you go. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so the... I ordered mine. I don't okay. think anyone else really... Cause I didn't... I guess I just sort of ordered them in terms of, you know, the ones that I guess... Because I really... I, I put I put thought into, like, what albums, I guess, stick with me. Because I started to think about, you know, some albums that, you know, I go back to occasionally and I'll listen or... And I started to think about it more and more and I realized, you know, it's not about the ones that I'm trying to think of that I used to listen to, but the ones that just sort of feel natural to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I did kind of order the ones I started to think of first, that, that came to my mind first. Uh, so my first one up is uh, Language by The Contortionist, which is a very good album. I listen to it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think the reason this album stuck with uh, st stuck it stuck with me <laughs> it it, uh, it stuck with me is because stuck <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I can't speak today. The, this is the album <laughs> that stuck with me because it's a very um, I don't know compared to all the other albums I have on this list or a lot of the other music I listen to. It really has a certain vibe to it. It's very. Almost uh, orchestrated in a way, rather than just you know playing music and you know there, there are a lot of components to it. Uh, each of the song, it's um, what do you call it? like a concept album. Each song has this sort of story, and the whole album has a story, and it's something I felt like that in and of itself being this complete thing. With each song, kind of works on its own, but being a more complete thing really is what helped it sort of feel like this complete album and something that sort of stuck with me over time. Because there are so many different parts I could think of and there's so many memorable like hooks in each of the songs that I can um, really go back to. So yeah, that's my uh, first one. Uh, oh, then I go in again or are we going around? It's up to you guys. I don't doesn't care. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, we, we can go I around. Care. I care. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, ooh, yeah. go around. Yeah. Um, I'll just go uh, with an album that uh, has always is it, it, it's the most recent album on my list, and it's an album that I literally just feel like I go back to all the time, and it instantly puts me in a good mood, gets me hyped up, and that's Nightmare Logic from Power Trip. Uh, I don't think I will ever stop listening to this album. I guess maybe unless Power Trip puts out something better, but I don't know. <laughs> it's just like the other day. It was kind of just you know it's late in the day. You work. You know, work all day, and you're driving home, and this, you know, the title track came on, like, a playlist I was listening to. I'm like, now I'm, like, hyped, and now I'm a danger to everybody, because I'm fucking hyped I'm up in the car, you know what I mean? You know? It, it, it's, <laughs> or the other day, I was taking a shower, and fucking Executioner's uh, Axe came on, and then literally... Did you become a danger to everyone then? <laughs> well, I became a danger to myself because I was fucking headbanging and air guitar too fucking hard. My neck literally hurt after that. You didn't slip in the shower, <laughs> did you? <laughs> I just... I I've just, done that. It fucking hurts. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I just get so excited when anything about this album uh, comes on. And uh, it's an album that I love. And honestly, this, this is becoming my favorite thrash metal album of all time. Tall thing to say. Tall thing to say. Big, big, big order. <laughs> it's a tall <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> okay. 
Kyle and Kit It's a bold, bold, is a, bold thing to say. And this is, this but, is uh, uh, yeah. And this, and this is this is a fucking day. Yeah, it is. Uh, so yeah, whatever. I have one, which is a little bit of a weird, weirder, uh, weirder pick because this was one of the uh, one of like the earlier like metal albums that I ever really got into, which is at the time, which is really surprising because I w- wasn't into this kind. And that's uh, Scream and Fire by Bullet from My Valentine. Mm. It was one of the first like, if you want to maybe use the term extreme metal band albums that I really got into. I mean, up, up until that point, I really only listened to like thrash metal and stuff like that from the 80s and like that was it but i mean i mean this, these memories kind of go hand in hand with like you know seeing them live for the first time and hearing a lot of songs from this album and like my first ever live show mm-hmm. so i mean it's just uh it's just a balls out aggressive album there's just a lot of great songs i mean screaming title track waking the demon hearts burst into fire say good night's a good song uh even like the some of the bonus tracks like road to nowhere yeah, is, an album, is a song that slams and I'm like man I just wish they'd play this because it's legitimately one of the best songs on the album but, forever and always mm, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're losing me there pal that, that, that's one on my list as well um, well yeah but I have a lot of memories with that one just like playing Gears of War Ooh. and listening to that album, that album. Yeah, lots of good stuff with them just I'm gonna throw in an honorable mention. Ooh, here we uh, go. I'll just pepper him in throughout my list. Why not? Uh, why not? Yeah. Uh, As daylight dies by Kill Switch Engage. Yeah. I'm not really going to into it. It's just an honorable mention. Yeah. Number nine is the the album Floral Green by the band Title Fight, mm-hmm. which is is sort of special to me because you know for the longest time for a long period of my life I really sort of exclusively listened to metal. And then at a certain time, I started to like explore a lot of different, I don't know, genres of music, a lot of other things. And I remember for a little while, I started to get like back into punk music, which was a lot of what I listened to before I really got into metal and like other things like that and rock and whatnot. And this was probably the album that I listened to most during that period, which I don't know, it just sort of stood out to me because, you know, for the first time in a long time, it wasn't, you know, breakdowns and and you know angry music and things like that and not that all metal's angry but you know the kind of music i did listen to Mm -hmm. it was sort of a break from that and this band like this album sort of opened me up to a lot of other music that i listened to so it was sort of a gateway into a lot of other bands not that they're really the same but like joyce manor and tiger's jaw and other bands like that that i occasionally listen to here and there um so yeah i felt like this was a influential album in a way you know, it sort of influenced me to get into other things. But yeah, the album itself is still really amazing. Um, yeah, hoping for more title fight sometime soon. Last album they put out was 2015, I think. Who was in the title fight? Um, it was Robert Whitaker until he just got hurt. Ooh. Bobby Knuckles. No, UFC 234, actually, at the recording of this video, <laughs> happens tonight. Robert Whitaker just got hurt. Like he got, he pulled out of the main event like hours early. He's the champion. Yeah. He had a hernia in his abdomen. Ooh. Yo, hernia. So now the main event is Israel Ooh. Adesanya against Anderson Silva. But Anderson Silva's old. Yeah, he, yeah, he coming he, he, off of a popping for roids. <laughs> so let's go, Izzy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good God. All in right. conclusion, title fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next up for me, I'm going to uh, do the Quantum Enigma from Epica. Uh, lots of memories associated with this one. Then I also just think it's definitely Epica's best album. Um, and it's one of the best like symphonic power metal albums that you can listen to. And you know, the way Epica blends, you know, kinda beauty and Simone's clean singing with some of the more aggressive side, I think it all comes together uh, perfectly on this album. But I remember you know, listening to this album, going to Boston to go to yeah, Mass that's, East. Yeah, one of those one. Jam the shit out of this. You could you um, throw a lot of those albums on, on these lists. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. And, and <laughs> I, I literally went to get this album on my last day of college, too. So I, when I think of this album, I think of that day because uh, that's when it came out. So lots of memories associated, but I think it's also just one of the strongest albums. Yeah, okay, I'm just trying to remember when that album came out. Uh, I had I had that album on the list, so I'm just going to piggyback off yeah. that, because, I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, mine's not in any order five anyway. five years ago. Yeah, yeah it was a long time ago. I mean, 
I, I, and I'll also be the first person Five. to admit this that yeah, that uh, for and I and I still sort of I'm, I'm a lot better about this now, but I'm sort of slow on the upkeep sometimes with transitioning to new things. And I think this album kind of opened my eyes to what metal could be. Like like I've never really listened to symphonic metal before this. It was just like there was like oh it's there's you know uh, some synthesizers or whatever that like bands use to simulate that kind of thing. And then the uh, Epica came out, and I'm like. This has like everything to it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, just great. Like the yeah, you know, the essence of silence. I mean, the title track is also great. And uh, oh, why am I forgetting the name of the song? The the other. It's gonna We're kill not me. gonna take it. Yeah, that's what it Unchain is. Unchain you. Token. Yeah, Unchain you. Token. <laughs> like, oh, why am I forgetting? Yeah, that's like this is some of my favorite songs to come out in the last ten years. Really, like, and I mean, Epica's. This was the album that basically skyrocketed to help push Epica to be like probably my. Second or third favorite band, mm-hmm. like ever. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, number eight. Sure. Is yeah. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. eight. I think yeah. Okay, for me, yeah. Um, is a uh, Merit by Mirka, which is an album that came out two years ago. Was that last year? It's last year's twenty eighteen. I'm not going to keep it up with what stuff comes out. I'm pretty sure it came out. In 2017, let me check here. Um, but yeah, it's 2017. Yeah, wow. Um, so it is an album again, like Title Fights album that was sort of influential to me in a way. But it didn't really lead to me listening to a lot of other genres. What it did was bring a lot of other genres to me and to my musical taste. Because for a long time, I looked at a lot of uh, like black metal bands. I can listen to some of them. Some of them pretty good, like uh, Burzum is all right. I like Burzum, but um, I've always been interested, like really intrigued with black metal, like the really, what would you say? Like it's almost exclusive, like it's this small thing and especially it comes from like one sort of main area of the world. I really, I've always been interested in like the different album covers and things like that but whenever it comes to the music it's tough for me to like it's just not really my thing I guess Mm -hmm. but I like a lot of the other things surrounding it so for this album to come out and really incorporate like folk and black metal and all these different things into this really this sort of album that really I guess almost was made for me in a way I really liked it it's something that is still I think the one of the most recent things I have on this list, um, but I think it's, I, I sort of see the effects that it's going to have for me in the future, that it, that I'm, you know, it, it, it's an album that I probably is my most listened to, I have one of my most listened to in 2017, or at least the past year and a half or whatever since it came out, but yeah, I, I definitely see it as a sort of a, maybe the beginning or something of me liking a lot of different other genres and things like that, but it, yeah, it does stick with me. There are a lot of great songs on the album. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna give a kind of a typical one, but it's where it honestly all started for me, uh, and that is "Back in Black" by ACDC. Oh, to, yeah. And to me, this album just never gets old. I mean, every song on it's a freaking classic. And uh, but this was the first uh, album I ever had. Uh, I remember getting it for Christmas. Oh god, I don't, I don't remember what year, but I remember getting this album. My uh, grandfather bought it for me, and you know, <clears throat> from there, kind of took off. You know, my the musical journey, I guess. And but but it just doesn't get old. ACDC to me doesn't get old. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can see how someone wouldn't like them, but they're one of the most fun bands to listen to. For and me, it was Highway to Hell. That was that. That, that was yeah. that. I did. I got Highway to Hell not long after Back yeah. in Black. But I think it was Back in. Um, that yeah. was the one for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I got Back in Black and then Highway to Hell and then um, the Razor's Edge. Mm, so, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's good, bad, good stuff. So, uh, my next one, I have uh, another recent album, but I also was looking at this album to stick with me of albums that I just listen either listen to a lot now or I did listen to, and I mean, Ride the Void, Holy Grail. Is kind That's of on my things. list. Yeah. yeah, just like I mean, <clears throat> yeah. it's still musically one of like I think one of my favorite albums ever. It's just mm-hmm. such a tight out one of one of the tightest productions of an album and the tightest performances from like just a band who has 
just a a style like a unique style of all their own of just trying to it just almost seems like everybody in the band is just constantly trying to one up each other and it's just like yeah great in that sense i mean from the title track uh, dark passenger uh crosswind you know i just it and i and i again this is another album that has like a lot to do with like a live show when I mean, seeing them live for the first time and being wowed and mm-hmm. then just get turning around and being like all right i'm listening to these guys constantly and then putting out you know this album which is great there's also uh opening for them yeah you know, o- o- yeah opening opening for that them yeah that was that was a thing <laughs> that happened like that's man i forgot about that yeah but yeah fuck right yeah. i don't know it's just like this is again another one of those like lightning in a bottle moments that sort of could only yeah. have happened so i remember when that album came out that summer i mean we were all obsessed with it like, yeah all of us were like damn holy grail is cool and then they put out another album and it wasn't as good and then no, I, 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 don't even, I, I don't even day. know what's going on anymore <laughs> with them so um, my next one, I guess it's going to be um, The Difference Between Hell and Home by the band Counterparts, which was, uh, I think, I want to say that was 2013, that album came out, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it was so. easily my most listened to album for the next year and a half or so. Um, it really It really sticks with me because each song is different than the last in a way like each song sort of has its own meaning each song has its own feeling um the lyrics on the album are really good uh they're they're really meaningful i think where you have a lot of other i mean not the trash hardcore bands but there are a lot of hardcore bands that have like a style to their lyrics you know it's very anti-establishment or it's very like it's it, 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 some things are personal, but they don't come across exactly personal. But it, it's it's in like the writing, I guess. And I thought like the the lyrics on this album are really good. I think they came they, so they sort of came along at a time when I needed them in my life. Uh, so I have, really have like a personal connection to the album. The music I think was really good. Uh, definitely my favorite hardcore album of all time. Uh, next up for me would be uh, Shogun from Trivium. Mm. Yeah. So, Trivium was to me Trivium along with Bullet for My Valentine, but I would say Trivium a little bit more because I listened to them more. Um, it's kind <laughs> of the gateway band for me to get into more extreme forms of of metal. Um, you know, I remember when we discovered Trivium and just listening. You know, because yeah, because I remember getting into like Ascendancy and Shogun kind of at the same time, and Ascendancy I, I went more to Shogun just because I, the songs are a lot better. But uh, also, I think Shogun just has that blend of everything that Trivium uh, at the time was really great at doing, and that's you know the heavy metalcore side, the thrashy side, the epic side. Like it really brings everything out in them, and you know. I'd say without that album, you know, I wouldn't be listening to so many other uh, great bands that I enjoy listening to because that that was the band that kind of that that in Scream Aim Fire especially got me to accept like screen vocals. Yeah. It's like the main form because at the time I was just like, I can't, yeah, I, I, can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with that, that shit. But you know, so yeah, very much in the same ways. I mean, if I would, the show would probably be an honorable mention on mine. Uh, and slightly weird left turn. Uh, my next one I'm gonna t- uh, I have is uh, the Marshall Mathers LP mm. by Eminem. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not the biggest hip hop fan, but I, and I, I I was for a while. But this was, you know, like seventh or eighth grade. I, I listened to this album in its entirety, and I mean, it's it's not only is it hands down Eminem's best album. I think it's one of the best albums of the 2010s. I mean, so many of the songs are just great in the way they're writing. I mean, Stan is, you know, probably the standout track from that, from this whole album, telling, like, being able to tell a story through rap, which is, you know, which which I don't think anything has been done, had been done that well up until that point. I mean, other songs like The Way I Am, and I just remember uh, this being, almost in a weird way, being like a precursor to me getting into metal, just because I was like, 
at a time when I'm like, I just want to listen to angry music. And I mean, Eminem is Mm -hmm. very angry music, to put it lightly. And this is like peak, like, if you want, like, you know, the, the crazy, like, vulgar Eminem but with like the the technical prowess that you know he shows like nowadays boom this is the album for you and I mean yeah I still come back to a lot of the songs on this album uh even even some of the goofier ones like uh Under the Influence Bitch Please are all fun songs and whatnot and uh yeah the real Slim Shady's maybe my favorite of his like single songs out there that's just a catchy song so um my next honorable mention i guess Mm. it's not i couldn't pick an album so i'm gonna kind of go with the greatest hits i guess of queen because i couldn't pick like a really a single album that i thought like i go back to this one album i go back to the hits i guess so i didn't want to count it in my list because it's not really an album but i would agree with you on that because queen is a band that i've gotten into a lot more recently and in like I haven't listened to their albums like in full, but like their hits, they have so many fucking hits that it almost doesn't yeah. matter. Like they like, have enough hits so to have good. like two albums. To so have like two or three yeah, albums, it's insane. insane. Yeah, pretty incredible. Um, my next one is "All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us" by the band Architects, which is an album that I only got into maybe a short time ago, maybe last year, I think last year or 2017 um it's an album that sticks sticks with me i think because it's another album that to me has really good lyrics that talk about things that i can really relate to or things that i think should be talked about like some of the messages on the album are kind of about um let me say it's sort of like people not really uh well, you know, like every day, you know, I go to work and then I'm like walking home just from my car to work, which isn't that long of a walk. I kind of see like trash all around me, litter everywhere. And, you know, they talk about things like sort of taking care of what we have, I guess, which you don't really see a lot in, you know, outside of like mainstream rock bands, things like that, like maybe U2 or some different bands like that but for like a metal band to really have that message and have music that i really like behind it other songs are a lot more deep like one re- one of the reasons that this album in particular stands out to me is because there's a song called gone with the wind which is a song that the guitarist wrote it was one of the last songs that he really wrote as he when he had cancer and like as he was sort of as his condition was getting worse he was right you you know he wrote this song as sort of his perspective, which was really, it's something, it's one of those songs that I think I won't ever really forget about. I will never forget the meaning behind it. It's just one of those really, I don't know if this is the right word for it, but it's just a really special song. It's really, you're not gonna find that everywhere. And this whole album sort of has themes like that of different perspective that I think I can really relate to or things that sort of, impact me in a way so that's a big reason why i have this album also i think the music itself is incredible there's a song called memento mori uh which is the last track on the album which is long compared to like a lot of other songs i think it's maybe seven or eight minutes or something like that it's it's just a masterpiece of of music i think so yeah i really love this album for the music you know the message messages behind it it's a great album uh, next up for me, I'm going to go with kind of another typical one, uh, but there's only a few of them left on my my list, but uh, And Justice for All by Metallica. Uh, <laughs> Boom. I remember the day I got this album, and I remember I was with, it was just me and my mom, we went to Walmart, and she bought me this album from fucking Walmart. But uh, <laughs> it was like, without this album... Uh, I mean, from there, things just really took off. Because there was ACDC, and there was uh, kind of Alice in Chains, and then Metallica. And that, that those were kind of the three big bands that got me really into music. And just listening to this album nonstop, and this Metallica being the band that, to me, made me want to play guitar, and be in a band, and write music, and... and 
you know, the, the, their influence on me is is uh, something else. And, and then, then you know, go through all, like all the early years of high school of just Metallica versus Bank of Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and tough. fucking Slayer sucks and Slipknot sucks and just so many memories associated with Metallica. But it really all kind of started with this album, just because of how how mean it is, how how incredible it is. Yeah, this was. Uh, I, I'll just again, I'll piggyback since we're going off this. Yeah, I had, I had Injustice for All on this, and I mean, it's. The first Metallica album that I feel like I, I realized that there was something special. It was the first, one of the first full-on like metal albums that I just kind of got into because I mean, it just has like a different sound. Like I mean, literally, and just how it just has this really mean, unpolished sound to just like this uh, super thrashy, but also at the same time technical thing. I mean, it has. The more I think about it, maybe the best Metallica song ever, and that's one. Like, the more I listen to that song, anyway, I'm just like, Good. man, this song's perfect. But, yeah, I just, again, so similar thing to a lot of my other things was, like, I, you know, middle school, getting, getting starting to getting into this stuff, and it's like, yeah, this, al- this album's the real deal. It's kind of, and a lot of the same memories that you were talking about, and just, you know, I don't know, it's almost like this thing of feeling special, because, you know, everybody talks about Master Puppets and the Black Album, but it's like, don't forget this one. This album, this album's the one, man. So, yeah. What number is this for me? I guess five, right? Mm-hmm. Five or six. Five. five, five, five. Number five for me is the first. I don't know. You call it Led Zeppelin one or whatever the first Led Zeppelin album was. This to me is one of the more influential albums on sort of the music that I listen to. I have another album on here that is. I know for a fact it's the most influential. But the first Zed Zeppelin album to me was it was my first real exposure to I don't, I don't know how you really say it. Like um not that every other band out there doesn't write good music, but I mean really truly like masterful songwriting, I guess to me with with you know, especially with like Jimmy Page being as good of a guitarist as he is, uh, you had songs like "Good Times, Bad Times," "Communication Breakdown," um, "Dazed and Confused" on this album. So many really good songs that I didn't really come into Zeppelin until not not super early in my life, but you know, and it didn't really hit at first. You know, I thought they were like, I, it wasn't really my thing, I guess. But then I sort of came back to them and. Just kind of going back and seeing, you know, the, the like seeing the influence on music now from a band like Led Zeppelin is is really special. And I think just this album specifically, you know, so many good songs on it. I think about it a lot. I come back. I listen to it a lot. It, you know, there will be times. I think probably once at least once every two weeks at work I just put on this album and I just listen to it once through while I'm working and mm-hmm. it's an album that I guess really sticks with me in that sense that I just really love the songs but yeah yeah uh, next up I'll go with uh, Blackwater Park from Opeth uh, you know just getting into more uh, different types of metal and exploring a lot of different subgenres at that point you know oh this was an album that you know, when I first listened to it in full, because I heard so much about, like, Blackwater Park by Opeth, that's one of the best metal albums of all time, and uh, it, it just opened my eyes to other genres of metal, you know, more progressive stuff, more uh, soft stuff, uh, because at the time, it was fucking thrash metal or breakdowns, and that's pretty much all I was really listening to <laughs> a lot of times, so listening to something like this and just you know, open, opening things up a little bit more of, it's okay if the song is, uh, I mean, Metallica has longer songs, but, you know, besides Metallica, having 10 minute songs that go a bunch of different places and give you all these different feelings, and uh, it's an album that is a special experience to listen to. Uh, you know, everybody wants Opeth to go back to this style, I don't think they ever will, but fuck it, just keep listening to this, because it's perfect. 
So there's a couple of mine I've been I keep talking about like some of the early albums that I really got into. Uh, this one's a little bit more of a, is it sticks with me more because after the fact, because one of the first bands I ever got into and it was the first metal band that I got into was Anthrax. Mm. It was, that's because of uh, our, it was because of our friend Brandon. Yeah. And it just so happened that a lot of the songs I was getting into at that time were from this album, so I'm going with Among the Living. Right. You know, it's just, I mean. That was like the kind of thing that opened my eyes to this whole other thing. Like I knew that like metal was a thing, but I was just like, I don't know. Again, my my limitations were like to what I would hear around like my dad, which means what was on the radio sometimes. That's basically Sabbath. I was like, I'm like, all right, that's metal. That's at that point I was, you know, didn't know any better, and I was like, hey, yeah, that's pretty good. And then. Brandon asked me to burn a CD for him with a bunch of Anthrax songs on it, and I just listened to him once, and I'm like. Do this, do this shit rocks with songs like Caught in a Mosh, the title track Among the Living, Indians, I Am the Law. Mm -hmm. There's so many good songs from this album. That's just, I mean, that, this album is maybe easily one of the most special just because of that fact. That Honestly, this is the one without this album, I wouldn't be listening to metal. I probably wouldn't be here right mm -hmm. now talking about this. So that's a lot of what that is. is yeah, one of, our, one of our friends just being like, hey, make me a CD. It took me a long time to get into Anthrax. Like a complete, I did not com like that complete, time. complete different yeah. trajectories. I'm like, boom! I'm all about this. Let's yeah. go. And yeah. My number four is the album. I know you have to have it. I, I know you have to have it. Dirt by Allison Chains. <laughs> I know you yeah. have to have it. You have it? Uh, I do not, not have it. Have I have it, it written have it. down. I don't know. <laughs> Because it is an album that will always stick with me. I was actually going to go with a different Alice in Chains ah. thing for this list, uh, just because you know, Dirt's a very typical answer yeah. for me. I mean, also, yeah. Dirt, Dirt's another one of those ones that's like it's it's on there, but like it's it's influential because of how great it is. Yeah. But like I'm, I kind of tried to pick ones with more of like a, yeah. a personal. It'll never get old to me, but yeah, you know, uh, you know, at least for me, it was an album that I listened to for a long time. Um, there are a lot of. I think it's sort of a theme for like a lot of the albums that I have on my list are things that stick with me more than just like, I mean, each album that I have, I really like the music. I like everything goes. I like it as an album, but a lot of the I guess things that I looked for when making this list was songs that sort of have some sort of special meaning to me. I guess, mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of songs on this album, especially like. You know, especially, like, I guess at the time in my life or, you know, life experiences, things like that. Um, but then the, the, just the songs themselves, I think, are really special. Uh, I think as a grunge album in the, in the time that it came out, it really stands out. I almost thought, I almost thought about putting uh, Nirvana on this list. As sort of an album that sticks sticks with me to remind me about music that I don't like, <laughs> I guess they kind of flip it that way. Uh, but this album to me That's is just hilarious. sort of the opposite of oh, be Nirvana in a way. Like each song has mm -hmm. such a great meaning to it, um, it's such a great tone to the album. I mean, you could say Alice in Chains sort of has they go with like one tone, which is sort of I don't know in ways depressing sad really emotional but i think those are the kind of albums that really will really stick with me if they hit in the right spot and this album i think it's hard for anyone to really listen to this album and not find something in it that will stick with them or that hits them in the right spot so i think this album is special because of that uh let's sum up super quick the next album for me uh this album also didn't Godsmack get their name from the song Godsmack? Yep, I believe so. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Rusty. Rusty. The singer from yeah. Godsmack? Rusty? Rusty what's Wallace. his name? Sol yeah. Sol Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should be. <laughs> this is going to be on Rusty's list. Yeah. Uh, the next album that I'm going to go with, <laughs> and it's an album that I actually revisited uh, about two weeks ago and went, fuck, I still really love listening to it. And it was an album that really influenced another period of uh, m my life and that's Constellations by August Burns Red. Fuck, dude. I had this next. <laughs> I had this next. Yeah. So, uh, yes. I, I still think this album is so fucking good and to me, August Burns Red 
like they've grown and done some other things, but they will never get me to feel the same way that this album does. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many incredible songs because at when I got into these guys, you know, there was kind of like two groups of dudes that I hung out with in high school. And, yeah. you know, we all kind of hung out with each other at times, too. But, you know, it, in for the other group, it was like August Burns Bread was like the fucking band. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we listened to a lot of bands like this, but, uh, man, that's like all we would really listen to. And, and to listen to this album and to get into these guys and see them live so many times and, you know. It just really is an album that will always be with me. And, I mean, there's so many fucking awesome songs on here that I actually just totally kind of forgot how good they were off of it. Like, Ocean of Apathy is incredible. Obviously, White Rosh and Mariana's Trench. Uh, Medler. Medler. Yeah. That, that that song is so good. And, and one of the other ones that sticks out to me is um, Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, I remember because August Burns Red, they're from Lancaster. They always play a... Um, Christmas like show. a Christmas, Christmas. show, Christmas. yeah, and it was. I've been to two of them, I think, and I think it was the first one that I was at. They played Indonesia, and they don't really play that song live. And I, I remember, you know, because they had the Christmas lights and they decorated with presents and all this stuff. And I remember Jake just standing up on the monitor, just swinging the fucking microphone around when the clean vocal parts are is going on that song. And it's, it, it was just, it's a memory of August Burns Red Live that I will always have. And, Banger an album. Cool. Uh, simply because I'm gonna have to bail here in a yeah, second. I'm, I'm gonna bang out my last four. Yeah. I mean, relatively quickly. Yeah. So uh, I'll get the one sort of outlier and all these out of the way. Uh, one of the earlier albums that I sort of was not that I. I it's gonna sound bad that I was forced to listen to, but it is an album that I really like. It's actually one of my favorite albums of all time, and that's uh, pronounced Leonard Skinner by mm. Leonard Skinner, their first album, which has all the hits. You What's it pronounced? Per, yeah. Yeah. Ha! You almost caught me with that one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this has like all the all the Leonard Skinner songs that you know of, except for "Sweet Home Alabama." It has like every other one. You That's know? the only Leonard Skinner song. No, there's, 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 there's only one Leonard Skinner yeah. song. It's "Sweet Home Alabama." What about "Freebird." Freebird's the other one. No, that's, that's, that's God not wrote that song. God wrote that song. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> and then uh, "Simple Man," "Give Me Three Steps," and uh, "Tuesday's Gone." My dad, he likes country and southern rock, so I. I, I was forced to listen to Skinner living up, growing up, but living up, wow. <laughs> wow, we each have a thing. Yeah. But, yep, we Very did it. tall thing we, to say of you. We did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's, it's an still, album that stuck with you while you did. were living up. While I was living up. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just... I mean, it's just a great album. It's just a great rock <laughs> album, and it's anything like that. I mean, it's... I think the album's perfect, start to finish, from the from the get-go. Another one's The Glorious Burden, Ice to Earth. Another mm. one of the early yeah. metal albums that I got Fuck. into, weirdly, because, again, middle school, except a class in middle school, where yeah. we, we listened to, like, one of the songs or something like that in, in the, like, a, whatever it was, social studies or whatever it was, and I'm like, like yeah. what? And then, uh, oh, with one of the dudes from Judas Priest, and I'm like, wait, this is a thing? And mm. then listen to it, and it's one of my favorite albums of all time. And then you find out he was on the worst Judas Priest album. He found he was on the worst, two worst <laughs> Judas Priest albums. Uh, next is, uh, Time One, Winter Sun. That's on my list. One of the well. one of the more yeah. recent obsessions, or actually one of them, because yep. there's quite a few recent obsessions. I mean, when when this when you showed me this album, because I mean, you found you, you heard of it first. You hear, just listen to these songs, and I'm like, these are the greatest pieces of music <laughs> I have heard ever. And then it's like, when is the time two happening? And it still hasn't happened. So. <laughs> which is which is still funny to think about. I mean, but that's always the thing. It's like maybe. The most anticipated band that I to have seen live at that time. I mean, maybe other than that was like Anthrax, because again, we were it was a, everybody was in anth into Anthrax at this point. But it's like, man, Winter Sun, you know, like, like the year after this happened, and then finally the last one. This album took me a while to get into, but it's been an album that I like a lot, and that's The Mountain by Hawken. Oh yeah, I fucking love this cool. album. I, uh, I, I, this album's like. I, I was like, oh yeah, this album's good when it first came out, but then I kind of listened to it again, like like a year or two ago, and I just, yeah, I fell in love with it. I think this album is one of the most beautiful albums I've ever listened to musically. I mean, I put it on this like, 
even though I knew that you know a lot of popular albums are gonna win, you know there was like this competition for like a March what was it March Mosh Madness. Everybody picks an album and people vote on it. And I put it and I put it in and it didn't make it past round one, which is a shame. <laughs> they put it up against Kesha and I'm like I'm not happy about this. But <laughs> it's, it's like Rainbows by Kesha and I'm like whatever. But again, popular artist. That's why and I'm like oh this, yeah, but this yeah, sucks. And I'm just like and then I I come back to this album a lot and just listen to like. Uh, and there it was, or the Cockroach King, or the Mountain Pass. I'm just like, yeah. oh, everything about this album's perfect. I love it so much. So yeah, it's a yeah. great album. That album reminds me of Shady Maple. It's <laughs> 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 <That's> just <laughs> weird because <laughs> I mean, other memories associated with it, but I had some like college thing, like club meeting up there, whatever, <laughs> and then coming home from that, I was like listening to this album, and it was like a rainy day. And, it's like it was a good movie. time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, I got bail. I mean, I'll be back eventually. Yep. But, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the end of this video. We'll by the end of this video. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Bye. Bye. See you. Good luck. I'll, tell, I'll do my best. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing porn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, look at those glasses and that jacket. Yeah. Right. Like, Jesus. no one can see. No. But I'll pop back. Uh, yeah, pop back around. Can see yeah. how much of a tool I look like. Yeah. It's actually. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> look at that guy. <laughs> It's a legend. <laughs> it's a legend in the making. Yeah. Over there. Going to the Grammys? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Did that already happen or no? Uh, tomorrow. Oh. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, number three, I had Constellations by August Burns Red, so I won't go too much into that. But yeah, kind of similar to you, it really <clears> reminds <throat> me of the time back then, you know, a simpler time, being in high school, mm -hmm. you know, always screwing around with a group of guys that like the... You know the same album. This is definitely the biggest album I think at the time. A lot of great songs on it. Yeah, yeah, definitely stuck with me. Um, my number two, or do you want to go next? Oh uh, yeah, I'll yeah, go next. Uh, next up, I have uh, Wick uh, from Royal Thunder. I've never heard, heard of these guys, so uh, they're an interesting band. I don't know what I would really call them because this is a little, you know. They have kind of rock influence, but then maybe some grunge side, but then uh, maybe some sludgy stuff, and all, all sorts of interesting styles. But uh, this was like April 2017-ish, and it's just, it's an album that, you know, because this is a little bit different band uh, for <clears throat> me to listen to, and it just, it fucking jams, uh, and, and the vocals are incredible. I mean, tracks... Um, like April showers are just like to me like I could see this band coming out in the 90s and putting out April showers and being fucking a massive band because it's got that grunge sort of sound yeah. to it but her voice is just incredibly fucking powerful and then uh, it's just a good good time in, in my life I remember being just totally obsessed with this album at the time and it's an album that you know when I throw it on it always brings me back a lot of memories so uh, my number two is All We Know of Heaven, All We Need of Hell by the band Paris, which mm -hmm. is another album that came out in 2017. Um, surprisingly, a number of albums I have on the list came out in the past couple years, which mm -hmm. was weird to me because I sort of looked at it like I want an album to have stuck with me for a while to know that it sticks with me. Because, I mean, I guess some of these albums would be like, I don't know if I'm going to listen to it in five years. Like, I don't, you never know. So, but, but I guess for the time now, it's an album that came out a year and a half ago. That's really stuck with me. Um, a lot of the songs are really, I, you know, I guess a theme for a lot of albums I have, a lot of the songs are really personal, I guess. Um, the album overall, it's a little depressing in a way, but I guess it was sort of special for me around that time. Cause I remember few months before the album came out my grandfather passed away and I was really in like a weird place so depressing music somehow helped me with that I guess mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's always going to be an album I, I love every song off this album but it's always going to be an album that sticks with me and not even in like a depressing way but I can always the songs aren't super slow and depressing but they're kind of like they're upbeat but I don't know it's it's sort of a really special connection with the album I guess is why it's gonna plus I think it's amazing amazing album I think the I think they're writing new music that might come out later this year or next year or something Cute. but yeah sweet uh, my number two is going to be it's an interesting one but uh 
Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I say that <clears throat> because I literally would not be where I am in life today without this album. Um, because, you know, I enjoyed Motley Crue a lot, and I went to see them live for the first time. They played this album in its entirety. It was fucking rad. Uh, but then ended up uh, talking to my, you know, now fiancé, you know, in just things happening and you know that that's been eight years ago now so like i when i think of my life sometimes i think of this album and this band it's a weird thing to associate with you know motley crew being this old 80s band and these old fucking dudes up on stage playing yeah. this album but yeah. you know it's it's an album that i i uh Always think. I mean, it is really good. It's by far Motley Crue's best album. I mean, there's some fucking bangers on there, like the title track, "Kickstart yeah. My Heart." Um, oh yeah. Is uh, "Girls, Girls, Girls" on this album? No, no. That, that's uh, that was the album before. But, uh, um, you know, oh, God, I'm blanking on what the title is. But don't go away, mad. That's a good one mm. too. <laughs> but I mean, it, it was cool for uh, Frank. Yeah, to replace Smash. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, because <laughs> uh, that was an <clears throat> like Molly Crew was trying to do their own festivals, and they had and they just called it Crew Fest. And yeah. at the time, it was that was Crew Fest two, and it was them, Godsmack, Godsmack was fucking great. Theory of a Dead Man, oh, <laughs> Drowning Pool. Forgot about them. Yeah. Drown and uh, too. Yeah. And uh, Charm City Devils. I don't think they're a band anymore. But I heard of them. Yeah. I heard of them back in the day. So. Apparently, Godsmack and Motley Crue did not get along at all on that tour. Oh. That's Sully. Why. That's it. <laughs> Sully. I don't know why I was calling him Dusty or Dusty. Rusty, whatever it was. <laughs> Sully. Sully Erna. Yeah. I knew it ended up with like a Y or something. <laughs> like yeah. Yes. All right. My number one album. Uh, Easily, it's the first album I thought of, but stuck with me over the years is American Idiot by Green Day, mm. which <clears throat> all these other albums that I have, I could say, have been important at some point or another in my life, and I'll kind of look, I'll think about them occasionally or, or often, I'll go back and I'll listen to them, but literally, I mean, like you guys have said about a couple albums, I would not like, I would probably not like the music I like now. I mean, I don't know. You never really said mm-hmm. that. But the, the, this is the most influential album in my life. Most influential music in my life. Before this album, I had listened to music, but it was never really something that I really got into. Like, this was the first album that I got into, I guess. It, it was something I listened to more. I became more interested in music. I would sit there and listen to the different parts of the music. Um so many great songs off the album I still think it's a great album um, yeah. maybe the last in my opinion good Green Day album uh, most would probably agree with you yeah, on that, yeah. honestly um, which <laughs> last week about a week ago yeah. it sort of made fun of someone liking Green Day unintentionally um, not knowing that Green Day is their favorite band yeah. so it's just funny well there's some uh, good songs by bad bands but anything by Green Day yeah you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, Green Day from this point prior is a legendary band. But yeah, this album specifically was is the most influential piece of music on my life. There are still songs I go back and I listen to. Jesus of Suburbia being like this five part song, like this nine minute five part song. Uh, there's another one, Homecoming. I think it was a later song on the album that had like four or five different parts to it. <clears throat> there are like all these mini songs packed into one that at, at the time sort of like didn't really like blow me away but I was like oh wow this is awesome and then of course there would be songs like you know Stairway to Heaven other songs like that that are longer and like these songs that are built out and, and you know given time to go somewhere and everything but you know at that time I was like there were so many bangers on the album there were there was uh Wake Me Up When September Ends, which might be the, my least favorite song off the album. Not like I don't like it, but I remember going to school like every morning in like sixth or seventh grade, and that song would be playing on the radio like every day. I'd just be like, oh. But that was actually the song that I like made me look up like and find out the band. Well, I, I kind of listened to Green Day before that. I, for some reason, didn't connect that that was Green Day. But um, 
Yeah, definitely the most influential piece of music of my life. Uh, yeah. My music taste, my everything musically. Uh, it's yeah. one of the few kind of modern day like rock <clears throat> albums, I guess, that I can think of that penetrated like pop radio. Yeah, like that yeah. doesn't really happen with rock yeah. bands anymore. And that fucking everywhere. That yeah, that like that it was, was a legendary huge. album. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it was like. Green Day was going on tours. I remember they put out like a live CD or something like that. They were touring in like England or something, and it was like just insane amounts of people. I mean, I guess still today they probably sell out easily, but yeah. I just remember at that time like Green Day was the band. They had a song on Madden, yeah, like a uh, football game. Um, yeah, uh, they were like they were huge, but yeah, that album to me, I listened to like every song on it. Front to back, probably easily my most listened to album ever. Yeah, probably. But yeah, uh, my last album that I'll talk about. And you, I mean, you talk about Dirt from Alice in Chains. That's my favorite album of all time. It'll <clears throat> always stick with me. But I want to talk about Alice in Chains' MTV Unplugged. Oh live yeah, album. yeah, okay, yeah. To me, there's so many memories associated with this, and I, I mean, I probably have listened to this as much as uh, Dirt. Uh, this is such a special live performance, and it's pretty much fucking flawless, besides uh, Wayne Staley literally fucking up the lyrics to <laughs> Sludge Factor when they played it, and he just, fuck! Yeah. And then he started over. But uh, uh, to me, this also just has uh, some of uh, the definitive versions of certain Alice in Chains songs, like Nutshell and Brother, uh, Maybe down the hole, depending on what, what you dig. Um, yeah. Rooster's really good. Got me wrong. Heaven beside you. Over now. Uh, Over to now, me, maybe, yeah. yeah, like, I would rather listen to the acoustic versions of some of these songs. And every time it starts, you know, listening to Nutshell and just knowing that, because um, this was 1996 and Lane Staley wasn't really in the greatest of health and you could literally tell that when he takes his sunglasses off yeah and his eyes are rolling back in his head yeah uh, and this was one of the last performances they ever did and it, it just it gives me chills like listening to nutshell and but he sounded great jerry was great the whole band put on a really great show and uh and i i remember watching the live dvd they put out too uh with my family like we literally just sat in the living room just watched the whole thing and uh it was something I, I won't forget so it, yeah. it sound always sticks with me and uh i don't listen to a lot of live albums that much for some reason i don't know just something that's never really appealed to me but this is by far the definitive live album yeah to me it's amazing that they pulled it off too with yeah. like his state of health and everything yeah but yeah yep so yeah that's that's it i mean uh, definitely longer than <laughs> I intended, but yeah. I think we had some really great discussions on a lot of albums. So let us know uh, what your albums oh, wait, are. I have two did. more honorable mentions. Oh yeah, I have a few. <laughs> I have a few too. <laughs> um, Mesmer by North Lane and Ninety Nine Left Balloons by Nana. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, just a few to throw out for me: uh, The Revenant King by Visigoth, uh, Beast in Black with their uh, debut berserker um day shell with nexus uh, that's an album from 2016 that just always always sticks to me it's a little bit different band for for me to listen to but uh twilight of the thunder god by amon oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the blackening by machine head uh meliora by ghost reminds me of two things one my hernia surgery and two rocket league <laughs> because that came out is it two like, very different yeah, things? I know. it's weird but that was the summer of 2015 where we were obsessed with Destiny and Rocket oh, yeah. League and The Witcher 3 and that was a fucking incredible yeah. summer I remember uh, that after getting The Witcher 3 after playing that and when I was kind of done with that we would play Rocket League a little bit Yeah. and then suddenly you guys didn't want to play Rocket League anymore because you were all playing Destiny I'm like what the fuck is Destiny so eventually I got it, and that was pretty much like all we played. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then just uh, The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. Uh, oh, lots yeah. of memories associated with that one. Um, Symphony X with Iconoclast reminds me of, I mean, a lot of different things. We were pretty into it uh, at the time, but it also reminds me of this just strange-ass snowstorm that we had, and we were coming back from the mall. 
of it's just me and Brandon and, and literally we were listening to this album and turned onto the road and that's when I had the old blazer and the blazer was just dead sideways and I don't know whenever I listen to this album that's what I remember was the snow and sliding in it and then the last one for me uh, is This Is Exile by White Chat. oh yeah yeah lots of memories associated with that one because that was another band we were certainly obsessed with oh, yeah. at the time and uh, that's an album that because uh, I really I was into metalcore but I wasn't into something like that fucking heavy and in your face um and then something just clicked with that album i you know one of our buddies at the time let me borrow it and i'm like fuck this is pretty insane and then i think without white chop i wouldn't have gotten into more traditional death metal uh and there's a lot of albums from there that i enjoy too so that that's an album that always sticks with me it's still good to listen to for sure Um, yeah even though white chapel's just kind of falling off a little bit yeah i don't know their new stuff's pretty good we'll see Anyways, let us know your uh, albums that will always stick with you. Uh, links to the other two videos are in the box below. Thanks for watching, listening. See you later.